Today's video, we take a cruise on Lake Mead, roam the beaches and see how much things have changed, visit a few old boats, and then take a look at Lake Las Vegas from the sky. So the boat that you see behind me right here was once fully exposed and on land, like many other boats that have been found at Lake Mead. But ever since the Colorado snowmelt started pouring back into Lake Powell and Lake Mead, it's sending some of these boats back into the water. Obviously this boat's not back underwater as of just yet, but back when I first came here in July of 22, this boat was probably about 25, 30 feet from the water or so. And if you get really close down there, the water's only about five feet from the water right now. This is one of the very first boats that I found when I first started coming out to Lake Mead to make these videos. While I'm no expert on boats, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be there. Now there is no question that Lake Mead has risen significantly over the past few months. The chart here shows how much it's climbed since January of 2023. And from an article published back in May of 2023 by Newsweek, it stated that Lake Mead could hit 1,060 feet by the end of July. And from the chart here, it looks like it's well on its way. Now here's some before and after photos that I've taken of Lake Mead. It really puts things into perspective and gives you a better visual of how much things have changed compared to only looking at a chart. Check it out everybody. The boat at Boulder Beach is almost fully underwater. So I was out here maybe about three weeks ago and I checked out the boat and it wasn't quite underwater, like it was surrounded. And then I saw that YouTube channel Sin City Outdoors and I saw how they were actually boating out on the lake and they actually brought their boat up to this one and they were fishing near it because it was that far under. And when I saw that, I was like, I gotta get out there and check it out for myself. So pretty crazy. I mean, dang, give it about another week or so and that sucker's probably gonna be fully submerged. So one of my purposes for today's video was to come back and check on this boat specifically. It happens to be my favorite boat at Lake Mead, and I thought for sure by now it would be back underwater. But it looks like the water hasn't come that close as of just yet. Well, look at that. What do we got here? An artifact of the past. Never really was a fan of Budweiser, but my dad always drank it growing up all the time. Then I tried one for the first time when I was like 18 or 19. Get out. The other part to today's mission was to come out and find this boat, and it didn't take that long, but it's definitely surrounded by water today compared to previous videos. And if you look out in the distance there, you can see Boulder Beach parking lot, which seems like it's shrinking by the day. And there used to be a trail that would take you from the Boulder Beach parking lot all the way out here. But as you can see, that trail is gone. Now let's talk about the famous oasis in the desert known as Lake Las Vegas, and then I'll tell you a little bit about Las Vegas Wash. Lake Las Vegas is a resort-style destination with many residential homes, golf courses, restaurants, and a variety of leisurely lake activities. But despite being called Lake Las Vegas, it's not a lake, and it's not in Las Vegas. Deceptive as fuck if you ask me. Let's break that down. Despite the name, Lake Las Vegas is located in Henderson, Nevada, and it's 15 miles from the Las Vegas Strip. And just to be super clear, it is not a natural lake. It is a reservoir, slash man-made. And a local I ran into told me that they decided to call it Lake Las Vegas because it sounded more appealing to tourists and people looking to buy homes. It's a pretty good strategy if you ask me. I mean, who would want to go visit a place called Lake Henderson or Henderson Reservoir when you could go visit a place called Lake Las Vegas? If I was a tourist, that would grab my attention. Construction on the dam that impounds Lake Las Vegas started in 1988 and was completed by 1991. It is an earth embankment dam that stands at 192 feet high and has a length of 4,200 feet. Lake Las Vegas does hold about 10,000 acre feet of water, has a surface area of about 320 acres, and according to ownlakelasvegas.com, its deepest point is 150 feet deep and has 10 miles of shoreline. But where exactly did the water come from originally to fill Lake Las Vegas, and how is it sustained today? Well, according to kingvegashomes.com, an estimated 3 billion gallons of water were diverted from Lake Mead to the reservoir to fill the lake. And according to reviewjournal.com, it states that Lake Las Vegas' top source is from storm runoff. Okay then, but that just begs the question, what happens if there's a lack of storms? The article also states that when storms run short of filling Lake Las Vegas, the community turns to the city of Henderson to make up the balance to fill up the lake. And where does the city of Henderson get its water from? Well, it gets its water from the same source that 90% of Southern Nevada gets its water from, Lake Mead. Also from the same article of KingVegasHomes.com, it states that Lake Las Vegas sits on top of Las Vegas Wash. The wash consists of two 12 mile long pipes which flow water from the valley and through Henderson City. This design also allows Lake Mead to continuously supply water to Lake Las Vegas. 
Now that article didn't specifically state if it was for the community of Lake Las Vegas for things like sinks and showers, or if it was meant to directly replenish the lake itself. Either way though, when storm runoff runs short, it's pretty clear where Lake Las Vegas gets its water from. And hey, I'm all for a nice beach house and a cocktail on a Sunday afternoon while listening to Kenny Rogers, but at the sacrifice of a reservoir that's still below healthy levels, I just can't get on board with that. But you guys let me know your thoughts down below. Now while we're on the topic, what is Las Vegas Wash and why is it important? Well aside from being a beautiful landscape with thriving greenery and an abundance of wildlife, Las Vegas Wash is the transportation system that redirects water from the valley back into Lake Mead. But there is a little bit more to it than that, so let me break it down. In Las Vegas, any water that does go down the drain from sinks and showers gets recycled. Once it goes down the drain, it travels through a series of underground pipes that takes it to one of four wastewater treatment facilities. Once it arrives there, it goes through several filtration systems and treatments to make sure that the water is up to safety standards. Once it's been fully treated, it gets released into the Las Vegas wash, then it gets carried out to Lake Mead where it will once again be used. And speaking of Lake Mead, let's go catch a cruise. Boat tours, that's us. Now, I'm gonna share with you guys a few details about the cruise. That way, if you like what you see and you wanna book one, I'll make it super easy for you. And then I'll let the views from the cruise speak for themselves. I booked the Hoover Dam sightseeing cruise by Lake Mead Cruises, and I'll post the link in the description for you. The cruise is 90 minutes round trip and it's $39 for adults and $20 for children. Now the Hoover Dam sightseeing cruise specifically runs Tuesday through Sunday and departs at noon. So that should give you enough time to work off your hangover. And if you guys do have any questions about the cruise, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. I'm pretty good about replying. The boat is a three level Mississippi style paddle wheeler and they do offer a variety of snacks and your choice of adult beverages while you're on board. And me personally, I would recommend the best damn margarita. I promise you, you're gonna love it. Trust me, I had three. From Hemingway Harbor, the boat follows the bathtub ring all the way to the backside of Hoover Dam. Now, at Lake Mead, it's easy to spot the bathtub ring and pretty visible from just about anywhere. But it's one thing to see the bathtub ring from the shore or from Hoover Dam, but let me tell you, it hits different from the perspective of the cruise. The angle of the ring varies all around the lake, but when you're up close and realize how small the boat is compared to how far up on the canyon walls the ring line goes, it's pretty scary, especially knowing that about 20 years ago, it would have all been underwater. Throughout the majority of the cruise, they do play a recording that tells you about the history of the land, the lake, and Hoover Dam. And if you're lucky, you may be able to see some mountain goats up on the canyon walls. Unfortunately, I was not able to spot any, but then again, I did have three margaritas. There is no assigned seating on the cruise, and you are free to move around as much as you'd like, and you definitely should. The views here just don't do it justice, but you do get plenty of opportunities to gaze at those gorgeous canyon walls and that beautiful emerald water. And once you do get to the backside of Hoover Dam, the boat does stop for a few minutes, so you will have plenty of time to snap as many photos as you'd like. And I gotta say, it was pretty nice to see Hoover Dam from a different perspective, but honestly, it really wasn't anything to write home about. And at some point while you're on the cruise, I would recommend making your way to the back, also referred to as the stern. You get a nice view of the paddle wheel as the boat's moving, and it makes for a great picture. 